Hey everybody, I'm Captain Floofers. And I'm Soylent Greg. And welcome to uh, the Squeeze the World video podcast for January 9th, 2020. Welcome back! It's, we have returned. It's been a long time, been a long time, been a long, lonely, lonely, <laughs> lonely, 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 lonely time. I was, I was going to, uh, it's been a long time. Anyway, whatever. Uh, yeah, we've returned triumphant and laden with the spoils of many successful uh, campaigns, and, uh, as you have seen. And uh, we are aiming to make this a regular thing again, yes. especially since we've only done, like, what, three or four last year. So Yeah, we haven't really been doing this for a while. Um, yeah. So hopefully we can get back into the swing of things. and Because um, we haven't been doing the Twitch streaming like we were supposed to. Yeah. Sorry. I know if the two or three of you who have been, like, periodically, you know, uh, refreshing uh, Floofers' Twitch page. Hasn't seen anything. <laughs> so, uh, so if you like this, be sure to like the video. You, you can't comment anymore, but you can like the video. So that's something. Anyway, um, so let's, uh, I guess, get, dig right right. You can also subscribe. Here. I don't know. You can, you can subscribe, yeah. That's... Okay. Anyway. Any whoozle. Anyway, so what have you been playing this week? This, uh, this week? Oh, yeah, we do, do, we do start with that, don't we? Yes, we do. Hello. Sponsored by Fizzy Lime Water not sponsored generic fizzy lime water this week uh i have been playing uh the witcher 3 on the switch i am knee deep in peasant misery simulator um uh, it's great misery simulator yeah the whole first act in velen is, is oh i thought that was like an actual game wading through the misery of peasants uh which it's great i love it i love portable witcher um i wish that it just ran at a better resolution uh even if it, it caused dips to the frame rate i wouldn't mind as much because the blur is kind of annoying when you're writing but whatever uh, i also got my first game clear for the for the year i beat uh right. curse of the crescent isle what dx is that? it is a game it was originally and this is this is why i bought it um it's a buck uh it was more when i bought it but it's on steam it's a buck it runs on everything uh, it was a game on Xbox Live Arcade, and not even like the respectable Xbox Live Arcade, but like the the Xbox Live Indie zone oh, no. that was full of like shovelware games and like Minecraft ripoffs. Mm -hmm. But there were a couple gems in there. The two the two that I, I remember were Crescent Isle and Laser Cat, which is also on Laser Cat, uh, which is also on on uh, Steam now. But uh, I played the demo for Crescent Isle back in the day. This is a somewhat remastered version of it it's a a platformer that unlike most like 2d platformers is heavily inspired by super mario brothers 2 for the nes so you jump on top of enemies and you pick them up and throw them but there's also uh, they do things like you pick up like a drill enemy and then use him to drill through the ground or oh, okay. there's an ice enemy and he freezes water which allows you to make platforms to continue. It's a good game. It's it's an hour or two long. Um, it's not terribly difficult. It was made by one person. It's very rough around the edges in some parts, but it's it's a pretty good game. What have you been playing? Well, uh, since getting back from Magfest, I've gotten back into Shenmue Two. Um which I was playing right before Greg got here. Uh, I also got my first game clear of the year. Yeah! Um, which was uh, Shovel Knight King of Cards, uh, the latest expansion to the... and last expansion, I should also say, uh, to the Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Uh, pick that up if you haven't as of yet. But it's, it's a pretty good expansion. I would say it's... Uh, I, I would say it's the second the second best part of the game, but the, the, the whole game, like, uh, you're just, just behind the, the main campaign is the best, but... Mm. Um, King Knights is, is probably my second favorite of the four. Um, I've also, uh, rather than going into, like, another portable game right away like I ha that I haven't cleared, I did see, um, I'll, I'll get more about to more about MAGFest later, um, but uh, one, one of the speedruns I watched at MAGFest was uh, Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance, mm. and I was like, I want to play this again, so uh, I started playing that again. That is the one that I had on the i had multiple ones but that was the one that i had on the gba that i actually played all the way through and beat yeah that one was cool all the ones on the gba were cool but um but yeah i think that's the one that people say that they don't like for some reason but it's really good so it i don't is, know what they're talking about i think it's it's very derivative of symphony of the night 
Which well, they all there are. are much worse things to be derivative of, frankly. Fair enough. I don't remember why. All right. So now that we've got now we've got that done. The preamble. The um, I found some news topics we can talk about that happened this past Yay, week. Yay! Video game news. So people got exploited for cash. So. Uh, the first of these actually came about today. Uh, today. They, they had the first... <laughs> the first Nintendo Direct of the Year was a Pokemon-centric one. And, oh, um, yeah, my kid was telling me about that. And the main thing that they uh, that they talked about is that uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield is going to have an expansion pass. Ooh. So, Pokemon now has DLC. Okay. Uh, first off, I don't know how I feel about that, but... Um, the expansion pass, um, I mean, I've only read, like, the cliff notes because I, I didn't get Pokemon Sword or Shield, uh, so I it doesn't really affect me. Me either, yet. I plan on picking it up at some point, but I, I have, uh, just on a, a rough estimate, hundreds of hours of Switch content right now to play through. Fair enough. Uh, between Witcher and, and Ease 8 and... Final Fantasy VII and Hollow Knight and yeah, just I got way too much to play right now. But I find it interesting because the expansion set uh, includes um, among new uh, new areas and new Pokemon, um, mm -hmm. like new Pokemon that weren't introduced when the game first came out, but like new Pokemon that they're making for these expansions, which okay. is a cool thing. Um, they're also throwing in older Pokemon that were originally cut from Sword and Shield. Ah. Now, we never really covered this because the last major podcast we did was, like, after E3. We didn't talk about this, but there was controversy around Pokemon. If you've been living under a rock, a Pokemon-less rock, <laughs> you um, probably know about the controversy, which is the Pokemon product placement on Terrace House. That, that and... <laughs> what, what, what has been uh, colloquially termed Dexit. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So basically, Game Freak came out and said uh, that these are these are the Pokemon that are going to be in Sword and Shield. You know, a mixture of new ones and a, bu a bunch of older ones. Uh, and they said that these are going to be the only Pokemon that are going to be ever be in the game. We're never going to add in any of the other older ones. Deal with it. Now, did they actually say that? Now, I, I'm going to be honest with you, the viewer, and this is definitely what you want to hear from the guy who's telling you about video game news. I haven't been following this. <laughs> I know people are mad about the Pokemon game. I know it, it doesn't look great, and it's missing a bunch of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So that's about all I know. That That is pretty much what I got from the statements that I read. Okay. Um, because the, the main thing that they said, they, they, they came up with a couple of excuses. Um, first, uh, the first one, the first one that they said, um, the first excuse they made was uh, that... Uh, it was too hard to bring over all of these Pokemon from the other games, and you know, I mean, the, the main thing was balance, I think, which is, which is a fairly, um, a fairly decent excuse in that in, in the meta game sense, because there are a lot of people who do uh, competitive online play. Um, is that a thing in the new Pokemon games? So it shows how much I know. Competitive? Can you, can you play like you bring your Switch and the other person brings their Switch and they connect and you? Oh yeah. Your Pokemon fight and oh yeah, cuddle. And smooch. They fight. Um, oh, that's Fire Emblem. My bad. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, Another game I want to pick up at some point this year. But I, have um, time for it. I think one of the excuses they came up with was that uh, it was too hard to like, program them in, even though they found out later that they just copied and pasted them from the past games. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was... That was I remember that there was like art assets just taken directly from the previous games. And now, despite all of this, now they're coming out and saying that not only are there new Pokemon coming in that they're made brand new just for these expansions, mm -hmm. but over two hundred older Pokemon are being put into the game now. Okay, so it seems like they're they're maybe they're just finding a way to balance it over time. I'm not trying to come up with any excuses for anyone. I like I said, I didn't get the game. Um, I actually. Thought that um, that they might come up with something that would hook me at some point, and they didn't. Uh, pretty, it was pretty much the nail in the coffin was when I found out what, that none of my favorite Pokemon were going to be in in the game. So I'm sorry. I know that you were a big fan of Jinx, Ampharos actually, but and, and Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime is in the game though. Oh, Mr. Mime is in it. Of course, I picked one where he is in the game. 
I was just picking this he... because of the the <laughs> black face. That would be evolution. That would be your favorite. Oh, but he has an evolution. Mister Mime has an evolution now. It's, is it Mrs. Mime? No. Please tell me it's Mrs. Mime. No, it's something else. But... Damn. I don't know. I just, I just find it kind of interesting that they said that, uh, yeah, we're never going to be adding this stuff in, and then they went and added the stuff in later. I, I, I don't think. I, I, you know, some some people might say that they're doing this just to kind of placate the the angry fan base. I think that they planned this from the start. Honestly, because the uh, the Pokemon games, while they are published by Nintendo, they're not developed by Nintendo. They're developed by the Pokemon Company, which which is the actual name of the company. Um, and the Pokemon Company is more, uh, more along the lines of let's get money than N Nintendo is more along. Let's make things that are fun for let's people. Let's make it rain. Yeah. I don't know. I, it feels a teensy bit far fetched to me, and not the Pokemon far fetched, which also has hand. which also has a new evolution. Um, my thoughts on this, in terms of DLC, I think that train has well and truly left the station already. Like. We already live in a world where Pokemon Go exists, and Pokemon Go makes money still, you know, years years after release, hand over fist. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea that they weren't going to further monetize the mainline console games is kind of you know uh, a foregone conclusion at this point. I don't know. I just I just think it's I just think it's kind of interesting because this is the first time they've actually gone off and done something like this to a mainline mm -hmm. Pokemon game. Yes. No, that is true. I mean, it's not like we haven't had, like, downloadable Pokemon before. We've had, like, special, like, mythical Pokemon. What about Pokemon got... Yellow? That was basically DLC, but you had to buy a whole new game. It was a different version, though. Uh, it was the same game. It was just you have Pikachu now. It was... And the cartridge is yellow. I, I do have to give, give them that. They made the cartridge a different color. It was a different version of the same game. They should do that, like... For real, they should they should make like, switch games that are different colors, and then they're they're worth more, like trading cards. <laughs> but no, for real, do you watch Terrace House? No. Wait, it's a. Do you know what it is? I think you've it's a mentioned Japanese it. reality show where they're all freakishly nice. The most recent season of Terrace House, they have been talking up Pokemon a lot, and two of the two of the housemates actually went on a date together, and on their first date, they went and played Pokemon Go. So now people are saying that Nintendo paid the terrace house people to like do stealth like pokemon advertisements it, i wouldn't put it past any major developer like honestly, the like, like the whole publisher. like subway thing and um what was it what was the tv show it was the the, the uh hawaii, hawaii 550 yeah. yeah where they just had the subway ad just in the middle of the in the middle of the the episode, you think you think they've gone to commercial and they haven't. They're they're you're still in the show. You're not even in the commercial yet. But but you know the the characters are talking about the deliciousness of the subway sandwich that they're eating. I was going to say something to the effect of I'm fairly sure Terrace House is reality TV and thus isn't scripted, but reality TV is also scripted. This is true. Anyway, uh, next topic, I suppose. Pokemon's good, folks. Unless it's you don't still... like it, then it's bad, and we agree with you. That's the important part. So next one, um, Alienware. Alienware. Um, so you remember, you remember Alienware, right? The world's second biggest overpriced uh, hardware company. Hello, Apple Watch. <laughs> <laughs> so they recently revealed. <laughs> <laughs> what did they reveal? Sorry. So a Alienware thing. recently revealed a, that they were coming out with a handheld gaming PC, and um, it kind so of, a laptop. Well, no. It, it kind of looks like a tablet. I mean, laptops are tablets these days, too. But it kind of looks like a tablet, except maybe a bit thicker. Um, okay. And it also has... Can we get a picture of that up on the up on the screen, yeah, Charlie? I'll, I'll Charlie, can you load that? Uh, and as you can see from the picture, it has these neat little, like, controller halves that kind of snap onto the sides. Oh, wow, sides. that's blatant. And um, <laughs> they can come off, and, and you, they can even make, their own, make, like, a full controller. Oh. Um, but it's not the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Then I'll ram my overpositor down your throat and lay my eggs in your chest. But I'm not an alien. I haven't I haven't looked too much into like what the specs are and whatnot. Uh -huh. I I just uh, I've just I've seen pictures and stuff, and I'm like, um, wow, that's uh, pretty brash of them. <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. Um, the switch is is goodness and light, and um, it would be the best thing for them to rip off. Um, you don't need 
a particularly powerful set of hardware anymore to run games, at least not modern, you know, AAA, AAA, uh, 2019, 2020 games, it's 2020 now, I have to keep remembering that, uh, in 720p. So if you create a portable console with a 720p screen, it can, it can have a fairly uh, modest hardware cost. Uh, and I think that's the segment of the market that, you know, Nintendo is is killing. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they, they can have, like, a modest hardware cost. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's Alienware, so they're probably going to go for, like, a... This is fair. I, I forgot it was Alienware. Yes, yeah, so they're probably going to... I mean, they're probably going to try to ramp up the specs a bit. I mean, they, they, they're <laughs> they marketing it... Raspberry Pi. They're, they're marketing it as a PC, somehow. Maybe just because it runs Windows or something. But, um, you know, this is going to be, like... You know, and probably eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, and it then runs, it runs Linux, and then it's, it runs Hanna Montana OS, and then it's going to be you know outdated within a couple of years. Oh, of course, and then oh, absolutely. they're probably just going to forget about it. Only after that suckers point. are going to buy that shit. Yeah, you know? not like real true Slav gamers like us who buy the Nintendo Switch. Um, that's completely different. I just think that it, won't be outdated <laughs> in three years. I, I just no think certain. it's 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 just uh, no I mean, look looking at the picture. I don't know if you've seen the picture. But before yes, I've seen the picture. We yeah. just saw the picture on the screen. <laughs> but yeah. I even reacted to the picture. Didn't you see me reacting to the picture? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> but just it, did you see the fleas? It looks it looks exactly like a switch. I mean, it there's does. no no, it does. There's not like they're even trying to hide it. It's, it's just a slitch. A slitch. Uh, uh, that sounds slightly suggestive. A Nintendo slitch. <laughs> The Chinten remember the Chintendo V? No, I don't. What was the Chintendo V? That was want to get off on a tangent. That was um that was one of many um uh, Chinese Wii knockoffs from like eleven or twelve uh, years ago. You know that's a way to bring all of this full circle because there was that um, Chinese Nvidia Shield um, foam knockoff that ran. Uh, an official copy of Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2 on it. Exactly. So maybe we'll get, we won't get a Mario Weren't Galaxy they... HD collection on the Switch because that would make too much sense. But we'll get it on the Alienware, um, what's a, what's a synonym for Switch? The, 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 I think they're calling the it like, Alienware Chain. I think they're calling it the UFO or something. <laughs> the Alienware Exchange. <laughs> exchange. It's the Exchange. Ex that actually that actually does sound like something Alienware. That sounds like something. Uh, what was their name? Who was the people who made the sh the shitty phone? Nokia. Nokia. The N Gauge. The N Gauge. The yeah. Exchange. That's like the sequel to the N Gauge. <laughs> the N Gauge had taken the X -Gage. off. The X Gauge. <laughs> and for some reason, all of them run on Google Stadia. <laughs> Are we going to talk about Google, Google Stadia flopped real hard? I'm not shocked. Um, no. <laughs> when you make your marketing push, you know, your entire marketing push, you subscribe to this service. You can play games at 4K at, at, in 60 frames per second. And then you, you what you deliver is like 1080p, 30 frames per second. You blew it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you blew it. I didn't. I didn't put Google Stadia in there because I was looking for things that just happened this week. But uh... you were looking for things that were worth mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube is owned by Google. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> next topic: um, Platinum Games, uh, known for such great games as you know Bayonetta and. Star, Based Platinum. Star Fox Zero. Shut up! That didn't happen. <laughs> Wonderful 101. Wonderful 101. And Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and Vanquish. What, what, did, did you just not, did you knock all of your video game knowledge out of your head before this podcast and forgot about the works of our, our glorious lord, Hideki Kamiya? <laughs> A little bit, yeah. Um, but uh, they recently took a, uh, they recently received an investment from Chinese tech giant Tencent. Uh, that they are going to use to explore self-publishing. Now, on the one hand, Platinum Games has proven themselves time and time again that they are a competent developer, and I think it would be cool for them to become self-published and be able to make games on their own terms. Um, on the other hand, Tencent. It's 
Tencent. They're buying everybody I like. They bought the Path of Exile devs, too. I don't know if you heard about that. They bought a, a share in Grinding Gear Games. Hell, the they, Path of Exile people. Hell, they have shares in Nintendo. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah. Every time I go to the movies, I, we saw the Star War uh, last week. And I'm every sorry. every It was... I walked out of... I, why are we talking about this? About this? I walked out of the theater like... It's fine. Whatever. It is what it is. But the more time that passes between seeing Rise of Skywalker and 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 having it further in my rear view and, and going, that didn't make sense. That was completely moronic. That was, like, just bad. <laughs> the more I hate the film. <laughs> the, old, the more it retracts in my rear view, the more I hate it. Much but, like um, Tencent. Yes. Every time there was a trailer... For just the most god awful looking movie you could imagine. Just what cocaine addled Hollywood executive greenlit this shit. At the end, when the list of the the, the, the thing popped up with all the production logos behind it, ten cent pictures. Oh god. I'm like, they're just throwing money at anything now. This is what How happens fair. when when corporations just get too much this is this is the google stadia thing they will burn millions of dollars just to try and capture market share it's what google did with stadia it's what epic is doing with the epic game store right now they're giving they're they're paying 20 million dollars to to remedy for control for uh for the video game control not for the adjective yeah. control control Which will be playing control later. of control for exclusivity they're paying to have all of these uh free games two every two weeks drop in and good shit like subnautica and and uh surviving mars and shit uh and that's what tencent is doing it's it's what happens when you just have mo so much money that you can't even even reckon with the amount that you have yeah but you know you can't do anything good with it you just sort of throw these hail mary passes at conquering uh the the cloud gaming industry the, at dethroning Steam, at conquering the film industry, because even if it doesn't fucking work, you're still a multi-billionaire. It's like the producers. Yeah. No, it's not like the well, producers. I don't know. <laughs> they made a bad movie on purpose. That's true. Tencent just shits money at people, and awful cinema gets produced. But then, um... The new Top Gun, the god-awful-looking Top Gun. I'm sorry, I'll stop wait, interrupting you of this one. The god-awful-looking Top Gun with, with Tom Cruise back and he's the he's the instructor who instructs the new class of hotshot pilots 10 cents financing that and it looks like garbage and it's gonna suck um the switch actually just recently released in china and guess who's doing the distribution for that it's 10 cent how why <laughs> no no i know it's 10 cent, ten cent. um and the the thing that worries me is you know as as we've seen um in recent months with place with folks like blizzard um what what's going to happen to make it so that yeah. you know platinum's going to have to censor themselves because especially considering that this is this is the this is the uh the dev, dev house of hideki ask your mom kamiya <laughs> uh, based who, kamiya he is who is uh, uh, abashedly love unafraid him. to just love him say anything that's on his mind Call people insects, ban them on Twitter. I love Japanese game developers. Him, Yoko Taro, Kojima. They just give no shits on social media. It's great. And yet, we're going to be put into a position where he may have to start giving shits if he wants to continue making games for this company. <laughs> this is true. I think, I although I think if anything, uh, Camille will just leave and make another game dev studio. I'm, I'm already looking forward to the YouTube mashup of like Bayonetta uh at like the Hong Kong protests oh, and like God. as the protesters are getting tear gassed in the face she's like oh so close <laughs> you've been a naughty boy <laughs> uh, because platinum games will completely you know unequivocally support the chinese communist party of course absolutely as you do as you do when one is in china so the uh, next topic, it's a bit more of a more personal one for me, I guess. Personal topic. So, well, personal topic as in something that got me a bit excited because um, we oh uh, we haven't gotten we haven't gotten to uh, talk about much about it yet uh, or recently because you know podcast hasn't really been a thing for months. 
Uh, but I am a recent convert to the Shenmue fandom. Um, I got Shenmue... I, I actually watched uh, Brutal Moose's uh, stream archives for Shenmue 1 and 2, and however far he got in Shenmue 3. And I ended up getting all three games for Christmas this past year. Um, like I said, I'm in the middle of two right now, but um, he I've, was playing it when I got here. I've been enjoying the crap out of these games, and um, I knowing how the development has been on this the series mm -hmm. and what Yu Suzuki wants to eventually have, you know, a completed story. Um, I kind of got a bit excited when. Um, so uh, when Eastnet, uh, which is uh, uh, Yu Suzuki's current development company that that's that made Shenmue Three, um, said that there was that their support team said that they can't st they can't wait to start work on Shenmue Four. And can't um, wait, that doesn't mean they're making Shenmue Four. That means they I know. can't wait. It, it it has kind of you know connotations because because Shenmue is not. A, it's not a uh, an IP that Eastnet owns. Okay. When when Yu Suzuki originally worked on Shenmue One and Two, he was working for Sega. Okay. Because these were games that originally came out on the Dreamcast. And when Suzuki left Se Sega, he didn't bring Shenmue with him. He okay. actually had to get special permission from Sega to use the license and the characters to make Shenmue Three. Okay. So. So it's 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 kind of like an unknown factor as to whether or not we'll actually be able to get a finished story with Shenmue Four, or even if if it comes to a Shenmue Five, um, because he has this huge grandiose vision and everything, and that's why it's been taking so long to get this damn thing done. Um, that and money. That and money. Um, but uh, can we get the Cardi B money noise, Charlie? <laughs> money. Thank you. You're going to have a lot of editing to do after this one. I'm sorry. I'm Charlie. It's so good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. But I mean, it's just, just, you just, um, you know, seeing that, that statement just, you know, kind of gives me hope that maybe, maybe Sega's keeps, maybe they're, they're still allowing him to use the, 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 the IP. Cause more Shenmue's okay with me. I mean, I'm assuming it will, uh, come down as it as it always does to sales whether it's worth it to sega to to well, throw the money on the license yeah because shenmue 3 didn't do super well in the grand scheme of things most of the sales that they got were from like the backers and what because it was a, it was a kickstarter um and uh Basically, the people who already knew that they wanted the game, they got the game, but... That happens with Kickstarters. Outside of the Kickstarter, it didn't do as well. I got I mainly it, uh, thought to get it, be, or at least ask for it for Christmas, because it was on sale because uh, it um, on Amazon for like 35 bucks for the PS4 version. And that's How long after release was that? That was maybe a couple of weeks. Not a good sign. It's rarely a good sign. Although it was over Christmas, so sometimes that happens. Maybe I don't know, but um, I, I'm just I'm. I, I, it's just kind of a expect the worst, hope for the best sort of thing. I really do want Suzuki at the very least to see his vision through to the end, and I'm willing to see the story all the way through. I mean, if it if it doesn't happen, then you know, case or asara. But um, it's just something I'd really like to see. And Sega, if you're watching this, and I know that you are, I'm still waiting for Alien Isolation 2. Mm -hmm. Make it happen, cowards. They didn't do it because they're just too scared of, of how scary an Alien Isolation 2 would be. They're scared that it might come up like the, uh, the and end up like that, that shitty mobile game they made afterwards. Oh, yeah, the Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff? Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't a bad game. I mean, for a Five Nights at Freddy's ripoff. Yes, I played the Alien Isolation phone game. And um, our final... Screw you. Our final topic... Don't uh, judge me. <laughs> our final topic for the final podcast this discussion. evening. Uh, Star Citizen is still not out yet. Wait. <laughs> oh, they're getting sued. Did you hear about that? That Crytek no. is suing them? Because... Uh, I heard the game was an alpha now, though. And people are playing the alpha. They're they're getting sued because... And, and again... This is not something I've I followed other than seeing in the news the lawsuit and, and snickering. 
Um, but as everybody knows, there is there is the sort of persistent online universe of Star Citizen. There's also this thing called Squadron Forty Two, which mm-hmm. is a, a that's a first person shooter a thing, right? Single player. We don't know exactly what it is. It's, it's like a single player experience, and they motion captured. Uh, What's his face? Uh, a celebrity, Gary Oldman and Mark oh, Hamill and, and Gillian Anderson. Yeah, they had the whole the whole cast and everything. Um, Wasn't this supposed to be part of the main game? And yes, they just kind of split it that's off. That's the thing: is Crytek only licensed them essentially the the technology, the the engine to make one game. They are alleging that Squadron Forty Two is its own game. So. Uh, Roger Space Industry, Robert Space Industries owes them money essentially, uh, for for because they they paid them to use the the light the engine to make one game, not multiple games. But you know, I'm fairly sure that Robert Space Industries has more than enough money at this point to pay them off. I mean, they got that that sweet blood diamond money from <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> like, oh, I forgot it. God, we need to do like a decade, like a an awful headlines of the decade roundup. We need to talk about like, oh my god, all the all the awful stuff. Yeah, you know, Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yes, um, uh, I was thinking about the the Kotaku article where the person uh, thought that there was a racial slur in the in the Persona Five oh soundtrack. Oh god, yeah. Yes. Uh, or it was an, able, an ableist slur. An ableist slur. That's absolutely right. Um, uh, we can we can do that next week. If oh, you want. we could do it like a worst of the decade games journalism roundup. I would. Let's do that next week. Oh, I would have to do so much, so much digging though. That's fine. Oh, so much research. It'd be oh, right. I so I, I believe that with the the news articles done, you wanted to talk and you wanted to give us a trip report of your trip to oh, yes a certain nerd mecca that meets not too terribly far from us. Not to to give away our location to the drones that EA has been sending after us since we single handedly. Uh, tank Star Wars Battlefront 2 with our podcast. <laughs> Get out of here, Wilson! <laughs> but, uh, yes. But, anyway, I'll, I'll hand it over to Pat. So, yeah. To, um, to floofers. As I, as I mentioned uh, in the podcast... Still camera? Yes. Yeah, the, the podcast last podcast. time, uh, the end of year thing that I just kind of threw together, um, I went to MAGFest at the beginning of the... the very beginning of the year, actually. We actually left here to go there on new year's day um and it ran from thursday the second through sunday the uh fifth and uh yeah some pretty interesting stuff i got some i dropped a thing and uh, (laughs) i um got some some bought some things i'll show on camera yes Um, i was gonna assume you were gonna show show things off so yeah i didn't i didn't see too many like panels per se I was say, um, what did you do at Magfest? Did you see any famous people? Now, um, t- technically, I did. Um, for like for like the fourth year in a row, at least the fourth, like, like every famous single time. People or, or famous, famous people. Yeah. I haven't seen any real YouTube famous people. people. YouTube. It's just mostly YouTube people. There. I mean, Ellen McLean, I think, was there. Okay. Um, and like, uh, I saw a Mega Ran concert by accident. I'll get to that later. Um, but. Uh, this is like the fourth t- the fourth time I've been to Magfest and I've seen Nintendo Capri Sun and didn't talk to him. <laughs> like I just see him in the registration line or something like that, and I'm just like, "Oh, hey, it's Nintendo Capri Sun." Nintendo, and... if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, we'll catch you next year. I talked to Linkara one time, like a few years back, but that's besides the point. But that's like the the, the most famous that I saw was was uh, was him. Um, uh, all of the uh, all of the. Um, the panels mostly looked like they sucked because it's basically just the looking at the titles of a lot of these panels it's like uh you know we don't we know that nobody's coming to this so we don't care we'll just put whatever title uh mostly okay. what mostly what i did um pretty much everything that i booked myself to watch uh i, I say book myself because there's like a guidebook app and everything oh ah, okay um they basically magfest tried to pull off their own kind of proprietary a charity speed running event like a oh, games done quick or everybody loves those yeah and it, it was it was fine but uh they have a bit of work to do so it was called mag fast they, they need to hire they fire their pr guy um no that's good <laughs> that's that's so cheesy that it actually works in um, my opinion 
let us know down below in the comments you can no longer post in. Send us <laughs> emails and the blood sigils that we receive on the walls, please. Yeah, we got we need some more of those. Yeah. The the old ones are getting getting crusty. Crusty and brown. They they no longer look like the save points from Silent Hill two anymore. That's a problem. Silent Hill two. Silent Hill three, I'm sorry. Oh. Two had the two had the red squares. Three had the the sigils. My bad. God. Either way. The circumcision wiki guy will never forgive me. <laughs> so anyway, um, sorry. <laughs> the uh, the scheduling on it oh, was a bit wonky. Um, I know because they, um, for the most part, the runs were fine. Okay. Like uh, I didn't see like too many that went beyond estimate or anything like that. Uh, it's just that because I think that they were trying to tap into the fact that um, the M A G in Magfest stands for music and games. Right. Uh, and the, instead of just like having speed runs the entire time, like your your games done quicks or your your RPG limit break, right? Um, they actually like in the uh, late afternoon to late e um, late evening would have music blocks. Okay. Like with like live entertainers and whatnot, which is you know it's it's, it's That's fine. That's awesome. But they always ended up going over with those. Okay. Like the first night I was there. Um, one of the things that I really wanted to see, uh, was they, um, there's a, there's a, there's a guy, um, who's like a local, main, the main localizer from Into Creates, uh, usually does runs here and there. Okay. And he was doing a, not necessarily a speed run, but just like kind of like a competent run of Mega Man 3. <laughs> the thing is though, competent run. uh, he had with him one of the original composers for Mega Man 3. Oh. And, you know, they had her there, and they were doing, like, a, like a Q&A thing. And it was actually, you know, a lot of fun. Very interesting. Um, that but, does sound fun. But because the uh, the music break, the music block ran on so long, and they took so long setting the stage back up again for the uh, the gaming stuff, uh, it started, like, an hour late. Ah. And um, there was like, going to be another thing I was going to stick around for afterwards, and it was like, it's almost midnight. I'm not going to stick around for that. But it's Magfest. So I guess if you're not pounding balls and attending uh, increasingly strange nerd land parties where clothing is optional, are you even really attending Magfest? Look, I, it would have been one thing if we were staying in the hotel that the convention center was in. That's fair. But we weren't able to get a room there, so we went. We were at the hotel across the street. Why am I surrounded by frogs all of a sudden? Because we're playing for the frog with Elto. <laughs> um, do they have the um, what? Is, I cannot remember their name. The band that plays the video game soundtracks while the person is playing the video game. I know who you're talking about, but no, that I didn't. I see cannot think about of their name. But they've done the they've done the Mega Man Two one in Richmond. They've done the Contra one in Richmond. Um, and I have a bunch of friends who always go to those. I cannot remember what the name of them is though. Uh, I will remember probably knowing me the instant we stop recording. It will it will occur to me. Um, I I I'm, I know who you're talking about, but I can't think of their name either. I know the Proto Men were there. They did a concert. Um, oh, the Proto Men are great. Um, Meg, the rap rapper Mega Ran was there. Um, he's pretty uh, pretty popular. Uh, the only reason I knew he was there was when I went to uh, the last night. Uh, the last night we were there, I went to go see a uh, Mystical Ninja starring Goemon run. Nice. And um, when I got there, the Mega Ran concert was just starting. So that started, ended up starting almost two hours late. Ah. And they hard locked, so they couldn't even finish. Oh, no. They were almost done, too. What happened? Um, They just encountered, like, a glitch or something that they didn't. Jeez. I mean, they were accounting for glitches all the, all the time. Um, and it's a, it was a very interesting run. And then they just that is rough. tried to go through a door in one of the temples, and then it just locked up. Oh, that sucks. And they weren't saving the game or didn't have any safety saves or anything, so it was like, that's it. And I'm like, well, darn it. But I did get to see a pretty kick-ass uh, Link's Awakening run, and Ooh. I donated during that. Old or new? Uh, old. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, game Boy Color version. Game Boy Color version. And I donated during that. So it's uh, $20, $20 from Captain Floofers. You're welcome. Oh, did, did it get red? Did they have people did, reading their it did read. Oh, that's got so red. cool. I love it. Um, so you're welcome, Child's Play. Oh, it was for Child's Play? It was nice. for Child's Play. Always good. Um, but basically the rest of the time I was there... That's tax deductible, don't forget that. 
Um, the rest of the time I was there, um, you know, the, the main the main area that, that my friends and I were at, it's like a bunch of the ballrooms kind of, they're slightly separated off, but right. there's only like one entrance to, uh, to like all four. Uh, and there was the there was the dealer's room was there. There was like a, there's like always like an indie game set up, and then on, on either end there one end is at the arcade, okay. which has arcade games set up, and the other end is the uh, like, like the console room. Oh, what arcade games did they have? Did you play the arcade games? Um, I played a couple. I, I played a little bit of Sonic the Fighters, which okay. is an old crappy Sonic fighting game, which is just fun to play because it's so bad. Um, but they actually have a, there's a theater rhythm. Uh, I don't know if you play Theater Rhythm Final Fantasy. Yes. On the 3DS. The the rhythm game. The Final Fantasy rhythm game. There's that's an arcade good. version of that. Really? And uh, I played I that a few that. times. It's, that's a, It had a, a lot of songs that aren't in the 3DS version. Ooh. Um, and uh, that was really fun. And uh, the consoles, I just kind of... I played a little bit of Earthworm Jim. I played a little bit of... Uh, I think Mario 64 was actually open at one point, and I got to play that. Oh. Um, I didn't spend too much time there. Yeah, I mean... I understand why why you would, but it also I can play Earthworm Jim at home. Yeah, I can't do I I can I can do those things at home. I can't do the other things you can do at Magfest at home. I usually so. go there if I have a lot of time to kill. Yeah, but because there is a dealer's room, that does mean that I don't did go and I bought things. Hey, oh, consumerism. So What'd you buy? I got some What things. are you buying? Did Here. you buy that shirt at MAGFest? I did buy the shirt at MAGFest. This um, is, if you haven't noticed yet, this is... Oh, I'm off screen now. This is a shirt uh, that is of the, the dog ending from Silent Hill 2. Uh, a game I was just talking to somebody about the other day. You were just why. talking to me about it a little bit ago. <laughs> well, yeah, not, not today. Uh, I can't remember who, but uh, about why Silent Hill 2, one of the best games. Yeah. It's just, so it was all your work. I got this from the Fan Gamer booth. I, I've all, I've, I've, I have uh, been a patron of... Uh, I mean, I, I say patron as if it was a Patreon. I, I have been a customer of Fan Gamer for a long oh, time. Oh, okay. They have... Uh, most of the gamer shirts that you see me wear are from Fan Gamer. Uh, I got my uh, Undertale Collector's Edition from them. Um, the Flip Grip, which is the accessory that makes it so that you can play Switch games in Tate mode. Yes. Uh, that's from Fan Gamer. Uh, and they had a booth there, and when I was there, I actually picked this up the last day I was there. But that's that's an awesome shirt. I, I got like this it. Uh, this cool banjo kazooie keychain. Oh, let me see. Um, it has like a little. Hold that up for our, our folks. Can they not the, see it? At the at the oh, on YouTube. Yeah. So it's got yeah, get it get it close. So got the um, banjo banjo and kazooie. kazooie, and then it's got like there's a jiggy. Oh, that's so egg, cute. And a feather and a music note. Oh my god, I love that. That's awesome. So I'm gonna start using this for a little while. I also got this uh, interesting book from them. I'm trying to like sneak a peek. I haven't looked at what what in this file yet. Because I, I didn't so. I didn't point it out. Uh, this is what is this? This is uh, book two of Legends of Localization. Oh, Legends of Localization! Um, I've it, heard of this. For those of you who aren't familiar, uh, it's a website that's curated by one Clyde Mandolin, uh, who is a, who's been he's been um, a professional local localization expert guy for a long time. Uh, he's actually the one who did the fan translation of Mother 3, which was very well done. And uh, his website, he has, um, he does, he has articles every, um, you know, pretty much, I would, I would say almost weekly at the, mm -hmm. at the very most. Just kind of pointing out like, um, you know, just random things like trends That's he's so seen. Cool. Uh, but he also has so large, <laughs> he also has <laughs> um, huge chunks of articles devoted to certain games. Like he has one big one for Earthbound. Uh, he has a big one for Legend of Zelda, mm. uh, and I think he at least started one for Final Fantasy IV. But this is actually like the uh, like the print adaptation of his uh, of his Earthbound one. And it's I've the internet in a book. I've I've read the I've, I have read the articles on the internet, and but they're very very interesting. Um, and I, so cool. I, I figured it, you know, I should, I should go ahead and get this book. Do you have the first one or is this the first one you've owned? No, this is the first one I've owned. Cool. Oh, and the packaging is all, I, I didn't see it cause you were holding up the camera. Oh. The packaging is all like earthbound. It's got the, the Gigas, uh, Gigas, however you want to pronounce it. I don't know. Gigas. Gigas, like the, the tentacle, uh, womb. Yeah. Room. Yeah. The womb. The womb. Um, <laughs> The child with the yo-yo and tails of whim. <laughs> Guys, if you don't rec understand what we're talking about, this is a reference to a, to a TV show called C-Lab 2021 that was popular when Floofers and I were in college. Um, 
another booth that I usually uh, I usually visit at any of these conventions because like they've been at like every convention I've been to is mm-hmm. is a is a used game store called Mad Gear. Mad Gear. Um, and um, I picked up a cartridge of Live Alive for the Super Famicom. Uh, this is a a an obscure RPG oh, by SquareSoft. Um, I always thought it. I always thought it was Live a Live. I'm sorry. No. It's. Um, I learned I'm wrong today. It, it is uh, per the katakana underneath. It is Live Alive. Live Alive. And sponsored um, by Five Alive. <laughs> uh, it's it's. I've seen um, run like runs of it. I've I've played a little bit of the fan translation. It's very very interesting. Um, basically it's split up into different chapters and each chapter kind of has, um, it's like, it's, it's an RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, uh, like the, the battle system is all, all, is usually the same, but each chapter has like its own setting. Like okay. one, one is set during prehistory. One is set during feudal Japan. Uh, one is set in like a robot anime, like, um, kind of like Akira, I guess. <laughs> one of them is kind of like an aliens ripoff. That is so interesting. I'm gonna have to 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 play that on an and then it all comes together in the end. What? Oh, I'm oh that's awesome. We should we should uh, we should emulate that and play it on the channel. Yeah, we should. I have I have the uh, the fan translated ROM we for it. We should totally do that. We should. Uh, yeah, well, we'll it's play not this at some piracy point. because we own it. Yeah. Well, he owns it. I and um, I made sure that that it's uh, it, I, I actually put it in my Superboy earlier and it does work. So. Oh, awesome. That's that. And then lastly, That's so cool. from the uh, Video Games New York booth, which is a place that usually has a just kind of a whole bunch of different things, I got a new Switch game, Super Robot Wars T. Super Robot Wars T. Um, they just kind of like plop um, no, letters. letters at the ends. <laughs> I've played many Super Robot Wars games. These are, We have had uh, official Super Robot Wars games released over here, Super Robot Tyson. Um, but, uh, the ones that are only come out in Japanese and like the, uh, mm-hmm. nowadays the, uh, the Asian, um, regions, right. um, are all have licensed like animes and stuff in there. Oh, um, this particular okay. one has stuff like uh, several Gundams are in there. Um, Votoms, Gal Gygar, um, Gunbuster, Might Gyn. Evangelion, Evangelion. Nope, we're safe. Not in this one. Um, <laughs> Evangelion is... Cowboy Bebop! Yeah. Um, what? <laughs> this, around the time, like, I think the one before this uh, was was V. Don't ask how they choose the letters. That TV. one. That makes sense. Um, that one actually did have Evangelion, Evangelion on it, in it. That On that one, they started putting in just, like, not robots, but, like, large ships. So they had, like... Um, Space Battleship Yamato and Captain Harlock. What? This one has Captain Harlock and it's the debut for Cowboy Bebop. Oh my god. Cowboy Bebop's in this game. Yeah. And that is so um, cool. this is actually one I do kind of want to play on the channel uh, at some point in the future. And it's going to be fairly easy because this is the English version. And. Um, Asian, oh, but it's the Asian English. Asian English versions have come a long way since the whole Sword English. Art Online um, debacle. They oh, actually man. do have quality translations now, so we have nothing to worry about. Uh, hopefully, okay. I've, I've, I played the because I played the Sword Art Online game on Vita, and that was some the worst translation I've I've seen that wasn't like an obscure Russian <laughs> horror I've, game developer. <laughs> I have the Asian English version of Common Rider uh, Climax Scramble on the Switch, uh-huh. and I was surprised at how accurate everything was and how they, you know, like the names of the writers were the ones that we actually recognized. They what? weren't like, oh, we're just going to try to, how does this be, be how would this be tra- translated if it were pronounced in English? No, they yeah. actually used the official spellings of everything. This is writer uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. This is writer. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another thing I found Whoa. at that booth. Now, the game isn't in this. This is just the Steelbook case, but... What? Um, the um, hell is that? So, when Link's Awakening came out on the Switch, there was a collector's edition that was only available in Europe and, I think, parts of Asia. And it was the same as the collector's edition we got over here in America, except it also had the Steelbook case with it. Oh. With Zelda, I thought it was 
uh, I thought that was like a notebook. Like you were going to open it up and it was going to have like lined no. pages in it. And I, knowing full well, I don't have a cartridge of the game because I downloaded it digitally. Uh, I've downloaded it on, my, on the Switch. Um, I just, I, I saw this was there and it's like, oh, hell this yeah. is, this is, favorite game. this is $35 and doesn't have the game. <laughs> I'm like, but I want it anyway. YOLO. <laughs> Amazing. Oh my God. And, um, Would the, uh, oh, that is, that is Link's Awakening. Would the, um, oh, it's got the little Switch. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I have the cartridge of Link's, of the Game Boy Link's Awakening somewhere. I found uh, I found my Game Boy copy of Super Mario Land not too long ago. Weirdly <clears throat> enough, oh, and even the um, the uh, serial number. On oh, the back. it's got the serial number and it, everything. And it spells out Legend of Zelda. Oh, of course it does. With letters and numbers. It dot matrix with stereo sound. It doesn't have the it doesn't have the little uh, liquid crystal display though, or is it, maybe that was my version, but and it wasn't on later ones. This is almost as large as the actual Game Boy. Yeah, I'm joking. Pretty much. I'm joking, uh, but the Game Boy was huge. Yeah, that is so cool. I'm, I'm afraid to like touch it. That's fine. Frankly, and that's uh, that's uh, I that's your get, Magfest haul. That's my Magfest haul. That's all I got. Um, Did you find love at Magfest? No, oh, that's not ever gonna happen. There's always next year. So um, yeah, that's all I wanted to show off there. Um, well, that's so cool. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. Greg, no, uh-uh. If we're ready to, because no, uh, after this uh, we're going to start. We're going to start uh, playing let's play. uh, Control. Yeah. Uh, I have played a little bit of Control, but uh, we are going to play it on the channel. Uh, I We were talking about what to play. Because we don't um, want to, we, we decided not to do Going On anymore. Yeah, it's, Going On. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to finish that on my own time. Yeah. Um, but I think there was a sort of a general idea that, that I should hold the controller and we should look for something that's not super terribly long but is also more than like an hour or two long and, yeah. and would be interesting. And I know both both Floofers and I have a, a long history of enjoying uh, the the SCP Foundation wiki. As, and, as much and, as it reminds me of past shame, yes. And internet horror in general, mm -hmm. uh, which control cribs from shamelessly so that should be interesting so um, um that'll be so enjoy up, that that'll be coming up along with uh better new lego dimensions videos that i i recorded the other day oh cool so uh um, lego dimensions awesome. we're gonna I probably have more videos a week than normal if i can keep with this so hopefully we'll have a uh we'll be able to keep with this and have another podcast next week and rock on into 2020 baby yeah and until then i've been captain floofers and i'm certainly greg and we'll be here next time join us won't you <laughs>